The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us today on our special webinar with Sonoma State University. It is my pleasure to introduce and welcome John B. Green, Director of Admissions at Sonoma State. And I think you can see him. So he can wave his hand to all of the students who are listening to him. So as, Hello, a, part of our, as a part of our goal is like we always want to make sure that we come up with a school's representative and have them meet and talk to the students on our platform. So this is a new opportunity for us. And Sonoma State is for the first time is with us. And today, John's going to talk about the school, the undergrad and the grade programs available at the school. And how could you be eligible to get admission for the very next intake available? So I just want this that you listen to this webinar and put uh, something, a sticky note or something where you can put all the notes. And at the end of the webinar, if you have any question, please go ahead and ask John and he'll be more than happy to answer that. And you can put your questions on the chat box. There is a question section in it. So feel free to write your questions and we will try to answer them in today's webinar. If not, we will get back to you via email providing you the information about your query. So I'll head it over to John and John, you can start now. Great. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is John Green, and I am the Director of Recruitment and Outreach for Sonoma State University. I'm very happy to have you here today. I'm sure all of you um, are, have enjoyed your day in here out in the coast in California, if you're not familiar. It's about 4 in the morning, 4 o'clock a.m., and I'm very happy to Kind of be here to walk you through some slides about Sonoma State University. If you see the slides there, you can kind of see some great pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge and the ocean. Um, bottom corner, you see some vineyards and then as well as some lakes. And so Sonoma State is located in one of the most beautiful areas of California. And in addition to that, it's only one hour away from San Francisco, which means it's close to major airports and a lot of the many. So you get both of or just the, the best of many different worlds at Sonoma State. And what we're going to do is um, go through these slides. And um, hopefully you'll have enough information to um, talk to the agents at Study Metro and, and perhaps apply and become a Sonoma State, Sonoma State um, student in the future. And so please let me know that these slides are coming through. And if you have any questions along the way, um, um, send a question via the chat mode or however you can do that. And I'll do my best to respond. And like you said, um, if I don't have those answers for you right now, um, I'll be sure to um, email them later. We can build a correspondence. And um, like I said, hopefully you'll get enough information that you want to apply to Sonoma State. So the next slide here kind of just says, who am I? You know, there's a picture of me. Um, pretty old, same old type of person you'd see. But um, I've been in higher education for about 20 years. I've worked for a few institutions um, in international recruitment, international enrollment. Um, Sonoma State is my first California student state university that I'm working for. And I'll talk a little bit more about what a California state university is. Um, you see my contact information there, um, and like we said, um, uh, you'll be able to either um, contact me, have my information there, or if you like, um, go through Study Metro and they can kind of send some emails on your behalf as well. We're all kind of here to support you to help you make this really uh, important decision um, where you want to study. And coming to the United States is a big thing. Applying to universities is a very important step in that process. Um, working and studying at the institution and ultimately um, getting a job perhaps in the United States I'm sure is what many of your goals are and we'd love to kind of help you get to that stage and become a, a Sonoma State alumni. Um, why study abroad at Sonoma State University? Um, you know besides those great pictures that I showed you um, there's academic excellence 
Um, Sonoma State is one of the 23 California State Universities, and there's um, universities that are north of us. There's universities that are way south. For instance, there's San Diego State University, which from here is about a about a four-hour flight away, uh, maybe a 11-hour drive. Um, they have Long Beach. You have um, San Francisco State University, San Jose State University. So those are some bigger ones. And then there's middle-sized state universities. And then there's um, ones on a smaller size. So like Sonoma State, we have 9,000 students compared to Long Beach West has over 40,000 students. So there's a wide diversity of um, California State Universities, but ultimately, and for what's important to you, I'm sure, is that you get a quality education at any one of these universities, and you end up getting a California State Diploma, whether it's an undergraduate degree or a master's degree, and that's you know very important. And in the long run, when you're looking for employment and they see a, a diploma from Sonoma State University, that's going to add a lot of value, and I think that's something that you're probably looking for, and hopefully. Um, we can talk about how you can become a student here today. You know, it's a long-term investment. You have to come to school here, study, get a internship, as well as possibly get a job. So you could be here a long time. So investing in your studies is a very important part. Um, we have very dedicated staff to help you get through the application process, working with Study Metro, working directly with you, the students, to help you get through the application. And then once you get here, making sure you have all the resources necessary to excel as a student. And then we can talk about, we'll see pictures about our facilities and, and more about kind of where the location is. Next slide kind of talks about ranking because that's usually a very important aspect. Not, you know, in the U.S., American students look at rankings a little bit different than international students. They kind of look for a fit. They kind of see where um, campuses are safe, have the right type of programs that they're interested in and then um, what kind of support they're going to get during their studies and what kind of support they get um, after their studies. And so Princeton University, which or Princeton Review Rankings, which is a, a big ranking system, listed Sonoma State as one of the best colleges, especially in the Western United States. And the reason it says college is because there's, we're a little bit smaller. Again, I said we have 9,000 students total. 1% of that is international students. And so we're just in a different category. but um, in terms of pricing and in terms of location and the academic quality, we're listed as one of the best colleges in the West United States as well as the United States. A couple more pictures about Sonoma State University, just an hour away from San Francisco. So you can kind of see the trolley, all the famous aspects of, Sonoma, of San Francisco. That middle sl slide you see there, that's Alcatraz and then the Golden Gate Bridge. That's the bridge you'd actually drive back and forth if you're going from Sonoma State to San Francisco for a visit or to catch a, a flight at um, SFO, San Francisco International Airport. And so you have the ability to access San Francisco, access Silicon Valley, which is about another 45 minutes on the other side of San Francisco, and have all these benefits and then be able to come back and study at Sonoma State and be in a very safe and inviting atmosphere. Um, here's some pictures again of kind of what Sonoma looks like. Um, you're right in the mid middle of the wine region, one of the top wine regions in the world, if not the best. Um, in addition, you kind of see that bottom left, there's tall redwoods that are hundreds if not thousands of years old. You can, in 15 to 20 minutes, you can be in a forest like that walking around with trees. And then a half hour away um, from Sonoma, you can be right at the ocean with beaches and just beautiful weather. So the diversity right here in this area is just absolutely amazing. And then like I said, you're an hour away from San Francisco and the downtown urban atmosphere and again, and Silicon Valley right after that. So um, if you want to get the most bang for your buck in uh, terms of an academic experience, um, it's really hard to beat Snow State University. A little bit of the map, you can kind of see here on the right, I kind of draw, drew down a um, Google map for you, kind of see the drive that you take. Um, so you can see you're coming in along the coast relatively, 
and then right when you look by San Francisco, um, you end up going over the, over the uh, San Francisco Bridge right to the heart of San Francisco. So pretty much a straight shot. Um, if you get a car, you know, you're driving in an hour and about an hour, I guess, 40 miles. Um, there's also different types of transportation, buses. Um, there's a train that kind of starts that can go all the way down to San Rafael, which is right where the um, blue and the gray join. And then from there, you can take a ferry to get to San Francisco. So lots of different modes that you can get in. Um, if you watch follow that gray line, you can see that's a different highway that you can take. And right where it says one hour, eight minutes, you know, that's the road that you take to Berkeley. So you can be right next to some University of California, Berkeley, and um, go visit those type of areas. So lots of things to do in the area. The bottom right-hand picture is just kind of a, a, a map of the Sonoma State campus. Um, you can see the hills behind. Those are actually kind of the vineyards. And really when you're on campus you can look and you can kind of see the hill so it's a very beautiful atmosphere you can see the main buildings down in the kind of like the center left of it and then surrounding that um, you can see kind of like designs of all the kind of dorms so you have the traditional traditional setup of a main center with the main buildings um, of Sonoma State that have been in existence um, especially the bigger ones since the 50s and 60s and they've been building ever since then um, and then surrounding that is, is the actual campus. And so everything's kind of contained. All the services are there for you. Um, makes it a very safe environment and very conducive to learning and being with your colleagues, being with the students, um, enjoying everything on campus. And then, like I said, you're right next to San Francisco. So, whoops, sorry about that. Um, housing options, just kind of mentioned that. We have on-campus housing, so some beautiful dorms. You can kind of see that center picture. Um, there's dorms that surround the campus. A uh, little picture to the right of what an inside of a dorm room looks like. And so, you know, those are um, pretty hot commodities. And so once you're making that as, as well as anywhere to live in California, because it's, um, you know, there's a lot of students that study in the state of California, especially at the California State Universities. And so once you're, if you're considering Sonoma State or any um, California State University, um, the application process is very important um, because housing options can be limited. So if you're really considering dorms, you kind of have to get your applications in early and go through that process. Um, but besides that, there's off-campus apartments that surround Sonoma State University. Um, and with with that are in, within walking distance or on a one-stop um, bus ride, so you have very convenient off-campus housing that surrounds the campus. And then there's homestay families, and a lot of times those are for undergraduates, but there are graduate students that enjoy that opportunity to live with an American family, and we kind of help assist you in identifying um, on-campus housing options, off-campus as well as if you'd like to stay with Homestay, we can help you set you up with families. So why choose Sonoma? Um, again, there's some pictures there on the left we can kind of go through, but you know, like I've been kind of mentioning, it's 9,000 students. 90% um, of the students are undergraduate, um, so you can kind of see it's heavy on the undergraduates, and the graduate programs are are also based in business, computer science, and we can kind of go through those major majors that are there. So overall, there's like 46 majors to choose from. Um, the ranking that we kind of talked about. There's a lot of emphasis, especially at Sonoma State University, on sustainability, service learning. We're more considered a, a liberal arts university, but we do have the computer science programs and lots of biology, STEM technology, as well as business, accounting, and uh, those services were also known as a music center and so that building you see in the middle that's our green music center that is only less than 10 years old and that supports a lot of the arts on campus and we have a lot of students learning uh, music programs for undergraduate as well as graduate just built a brand new student center to support student activities um, and then like those last bullets say there's lots of opportunities um, once you are graduating from the university to kind of go into your internships, the OPT, which is where you work with the company after you graduate and you have up to two years to do that. 
Um, so even though you have you're in an environment that's a little bit smaller, there's lots of companies that are supported in this region. Um, one of the aspects, you know, that a lot of the companies can't in, afford to be in Sil uh, Silicon Valley anymore, so they're kind of spreading their their footprint a little bit wider. And there's um, businesses like that that are showing up around this area as well. Um, talking about the degree programs a little bit again um, for undergraduate programs, 46 majors. Um, focusing on the business, um, some of the STEM, psychology, environmental studies. Graduate programs, uh, there are 15, and what we're kind of mainly focusing on, especially what we want to do here at Sonoma State, is grow our computer science programs to help support the growing industries around Sonoma as well as Silicon Valley. And so we have that master computer science. We have an MBA program, executive MBA programs, as well as um, administration programs. So, if you're looking for specific programs like that at uh, California State University, Sonoma State has um, stuff like that to offer you. Um, we also have a different type of program too. Say that you want to just, and all the CSUs have a program similar to this. It's called Semester at Sonoma. So this is where you can stay at um, Sonoma State University for a semester take real classes that are in the programs that you're interested in and study at Sonoma uh, and then ultimately get a transcript that I'm sure your university that you're currently studying at would accept and be applied to your program there. And so this is a very um, inexpensive opportunity to take up the 12 unit undergraduate study. There's um, some other, maybe some other opportunities there for graduate programs. Um, but for this type of cost to experience a California State University to study in the United States and then ultimately go back to your institution, um, this is a great way to kind of experience a California State University. So if I have any questions, especially um, the group there at Study Metro, please feel free to kind of stop me. But we're kind of going through these and, you know, I can answer questions along the way. Application deadlines. Um, this is kind of what you're looking for if you want to apply to Sonoma State University for this fall. Um, for the Sally, let's go off the top of the border there. Sally program, that's our English language program. So there is a requirement that you have to at least have a TOEFL score of, of 61 for an undergraduate or 80 for graduate students. For IELTS, you're probably looking at a 7.0 for an IELTS score for graduate students. And so those um, test scores, you'd have to then submit those test scores that come directly to Sonoma State University um, along with your application. And so we have start dates for fall or um, application dates usually for, for fall semester for Sally, so it's really late, but most of you um, won't have problems with the English scores, but you do have to submit those scores regardless as an international student. Semester at Sonoma, there's a deadline that's usually in spring. Um, undergraduate, April 30th would be a deadline to submit your application. So this is what we're looking for in 2017. The um, direct admit for graduate studies outside of um, the executive MBA program, which is run by the School of International Education, Extending ed and international education, like you see in our in our logo there, um, those programs, including the M uh, Masters of Science in Computer Science, the deadline is February 28th. But if you wanted to go into biology or one of the other um, graduate programs, the deadline is a little bit earlier. And then you can see also, as you go down the spring semester, there are starts in other graduate programs. But for the Masters of Computer Science, there's only one start, which is fall 2017, so next fall. Um, so unlike some other universities, Sonoma State University has many of the start dates that just begin in fall. So that's definitely something to remember. And by working with your agents, um, especially at Study Metro, they're going to help you go through this process to make sure you get your application and material in on time. So hopefully you have this um, information. Tuition. What does it cost to go to Sonoma State University? Um, like 
In the SALI program, which is our English language program, you're looking for around $4,300 in tuition um, for to attend the SALI program. The, the Sonoma, semester at Sonoma program, we kind of mentioned that a little bit. That cost um, is a little bit higher for one semester. Undergraduates, and so you kind of see these costs here. In general, the California State University's costs are pretty much the same since we're all one big um, California State University system. So when you look at undergraduate programs of 2700 per semester for 12 units, which is considered a full-time student, is kind of pretty much the same across the board, um, as well as graduate. The master's computer science is $500 per unit, so that's a very good price in terms of support since it's the School of Extended International Education. We um, put our own cost for tuition on there, and so that's what you'd be paying. So you can expect to pay for a total master's of computer science degree in tuition alone around $16,000. The differences come between the California State Universities is in that next row, which is the fees. If you're in a big downtown urban state university like Long Beach or San Francisco, the fees are going to be a little bit higher. In addition to that, the housing costs are going to be a, a, a little bit more higher, actually. So some of those universities, state universities of California, the fees and the housing costs are a little bit higher because it's based upon the cost of the location. So the tuition is kind of the same across the board, especially for the standard undergraduate and, under, and graduate programs. With our extended um, studies programs, um, they're a little bit less than the graduate programs. Um, but um, the housing and, and the fees is something that you, if you're looking for to be a little cost savings over the two to four, four years that you're at a California State University, um, you might want to consider looking at the fees, the housing costs of those locations, and that might be a factor to your studies. Again, you're going to be getting a California State University diploma, which is recognized worldwide for its quality, no matter what California State University you attend. Um, but if you're kind of looking at um, different benefits, of different programs, where you want to live, what kind of lifestyle you're looking for, what kind of experience you're looking for. Um, you know, because Sonoma State University is a little different in that aspect to, say, um, Long Beach University, which is a downtown Los Angeles type of environment. Health insurance is required. The last row you see there is required for all international students, so that's another factor that you have to consider. And that's a kind of a breakdown of the cost. It is kind of a high-level cost going on to our website, speaking with the, um, our agent partners here at Study Metro as well as start talking to our admission counselors here at Sonoma State, you'll get a really solid idea of what the costs are, what your experience would be, and then how to go through that application process. And so I'll give you a chance to look at that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is kind of talk a little bit about the actual um, Masters in Computer Science program. Dr. Fareed Farmand is um, uh, on our faculty here. He is from Iran and he's the graduate coordinator for the Masters of Computer Science program. And this is a graduate program. And so his contact information there and he unfortunately couldn't make it to be here at 4 o'clock this morning, but um, he's very willing to speak directly with the students if um, you have a questions for them and kind of help you through the process as well as the actual admissions counselors. And so we're all kind of here to support your, your academic endeavors starting off with the application process. The next slide, you can see a little bit more about the engineering science department in general, we do have a electrical engineering degree. It's a four-year bachelor's of science degree, as well as like we are going to go through now, the master's of science in computer engineering. Um, the start date, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, is just one start date, and that is fall 2017. Um, and I also kind of mentioned that, that semester at Sonoma program, so there is maybe opportunities to start earlier. Here are the links to the websites. Um, but it's pretty easy to go on a Sonoma State University 
um, web page and find these um, links yourself but I put them on here and then um, you'll be able to go and access it once you get this file so I will talk about the actual admission process including the application um, it, which is a paper application right now all the California State Universities in the very near future are going to go through a wholesale change in the online application process so I would say by fall next year which is too late to um, enroll in fall there will be new online application processes but kind of in, in the interim for this time um, Sonoma State University like some other California State Universities have a um, paper application process so it's a PDF that you fill out and um, email it back to our admissions offices to get the application process started and we can kind of help you go through that process. The areas of program focus um, for our computer engineering program are in electronics, um, analog digital integrated circuit types, microelectronics, and then the communications aspects, um, wireless, um, um, optical communications, as well as networking. Um, in the fall 2018-19, there will be a, in computer science will be some a bioengineering program. And so we're kind of expanding based upon the requirements and the needs of the businesses and the industries in the surrounding area, including Silicon Valley. And so that's why you see that our computer science degree is kind of focused on these um, different types of programs. And there's some kind of pictures of graduating classes. You can see very um, diversity. Again, it's a smaller class, so you're going to have between 10 and 15 students in these classes, so you have very hands-on opportunities to work with your classmates, the students, as well as um, industries that support the programs here at uh, Sonoma State University. Um, this kind of shows a very high level of having a starting uh, the pathway to the application process to get a degree at Sonoma State University. You could either start as a freshman, um, starting your engineering um, undergraduate degree here at Sonoma State, or you'd be bringing in a degree, a um, computer science degree, an engineering degree into Sonoma State University. And that's where you can see the, arrow, the first set of arrows to be an eligible student. Um, you do have to have an undergraduate degree from um, an, an engineering program. It can be computer science, it can be in under, other engineering programs. And we'll talk about more about the prerequisites for that if you're not having an undergraduate in computer science, maybe in something else. It uh, doesn't mean that you can't start your computer science master's degree at Sonoma State University, but there is some possibility of taking some prerequisites before that to make sure you have the right classes to begin the master's program. Working with the agency partner to help with the application process will be very important, as well as working with our counselors here at Sonoma State. Once you get that application information ready, then that's submitted to our school and will um, get you accepted into the Master's of Computer Science program, which generally is a two-year master's program. And you can see you'll be taking about 32 units uh, of uh, specific classes that we can kind of go into more and we have more detail on the Master's of Computer Science website. The bottom left-hand corner, we kind of I talked about a little bit, but um, there are requirements um, that you do submit a TOEFL score. You can see our Sonoma State um, ETS score, which is a company that you probably know about the TOEFL. The number there is 4723. We also do accept the IELTS and we need to get that um, sc score submitted through the IELTS and the minimum there is a 7.0. If you didn't have those scores, um, I think I mentioned a little bit earlier about our SALLY program, which is our intensive English program, and you'd be able to start and attend Sally or English language program um, even without a TOEFL score, achieve the fourth level of our um, intensive English program and then you'd be able to matriculate into your whatever program you're going into Noma State but right now we're kind of talking about master's program. So there are opportunities um, if you don't have those English language scores to um, do that on campus but Again, in most cases, students from India aren't going to have a problem with this, and they'll be able to submit the um, minimum scores to our school to participate into 
or to enroll in our master's in computer science program. Here are the different concentrations that we have. So there's three kind of concentrations on two main tracks. You have the computer hardware software systems um, and those type of focuses. Kind of mentioned that a little bit before. And so these are things that, again, are very relevant in the industries around California as well as the United States and in India. Um, so having this focus on these designs, your professors and your faculty are going to support you in developing your expertise in these different fields under computer hardware and software systems as well as communications and photonics. Again, the Master of Computer Science program is a two-year program primarily designed for working professionals, but there are um, instances where students in the U.S., students um, abroad that will be coming from their undergraduate programs, but um, depending upon um, the number of enrollees, you know, they possibly could be looking at what type of experience that you have. It's recognized as a professional science master's, PSM, which is um, a title that you will be able to have on your name next to your other titles as a master computer science student. Again, we talked a little bit, you know, we are a smaller campus, um, we have a smaller graduate program, so the classes are smaller, and there's a lot of hands-on active research. Um, internships opportunities from the local agencies that are around, around here, Agilent, Medtronic. Um, so there's definitely a, a growing medical um, corporations around this industry just because the newer ones that are popping up, the startups as well as the, more of the mid-tier, um, like seven to eight year type um, businesses that aren't considered startups anymore that are self-supporting. Um, they can't get themselves into the Sonoma or the Silicon Valley region. So they're starting to look more north um, and different areas around California. So the wealth of opportunities for internships as well as employment opportunities, OPT, um, as well. Um, and on campus, there's scholarships and research opportunities that, again, will be more information be on our websites. And I did kind of say that one of the least expensive programs in the area, so if you're looking at um, comparison to Santa Clara University, San Francisco State University, San Jose State University, we're definitely cheaper than those, um, those institutions, and you're still getting a very high quality university at a very, very good price. Um, the last five years of all the students that graduate from the computer science program, every one of them got a job in the United States um, in their field. So something like that, the support that you get at Sonoma State after you graduate from us is, is, is tops. And we have very active people that, you know, the success of Sonoma State itself is dependent upon how well our students do ultimately because um, we also like our alumni. And that just means that we're going to help make sure you go through the whole process, be successful, and then get an internship or assist you in looking for internships and then hopefully finding you a job here in the United States or then back in, in Iran or where you end up all, all around the world. Here are some of the internships and jobs, the placement that they have. And so some have gone on to um, PG&E, which is a giant um, electrical company, um, and then the other type of institute, Solar Installers, that's a very popular solar um, company as well as Tesla that has their battery um, corporations down in Reno, Nevada as well as down I think um, down by um, San Jose area. Um, so here are a lot of companies and internships that you have opportunities to and there are more. Um, in general, let's talk a little bit about the application process. Um, there's an application form that's found on our site and so there's actually two applications that I kind of mentioned earlier. There's one that's called the international application, and then there's also the Masters of Computer Science application, the PDFs that are found on our site, as well as um, Study Metro will probably have access to those applications that you fill out. Um, you send that application back as long as two certified transcripts. But in the meantime, if you just want to get your information in, and I know it's really hard to get your, to um, have, certified transcript, sending scanned copies of your transcripts along as your application will be accepted. Um, once you start and um, 
begin your studies here at Soma State, we will, will need certified transcripts. So, um, and that's pretty common around the state of California as well as in the U.S. to get um, scanned copies of your transcript that we use for determination, but out limit, ultimately to be accepted and begin your studies here, you would then have to commit and give your certified transcripts to Sonoma State University. There's a $55 um, fee for the application process that you can send to us. And in the application itself, you're going to have to have a personal statement, um, a letter of recommendation that could be from your business, professors that you would submit along with your application, and then a resume if you have one from your, let's see, your current employers and um, professional experiences. So it's a pretty, pretty general application process. Most uh, study metro, I'm sure, is very familiar with California State University system as well as this process. So they'll be able to help you out and get through this process. Again, you'll once you get this application submitted, or if you have questions, um, you'll be able to contact, um, email, and talk to our app, our um, admissions counselors, and they'll be able to help you out. Again, um, for admissions to the Masters Computer Science program, that flow chart kind of had at a high level, but you are going to need to have a bachelor or a bachelor's degree in a scientific or technical discipline from a U.S. institution or equivalent bachelor's degree from a foreign institution. So that's where I kind of said you don't have to have that Masters of Computer Science degree, but it has to be a bachelor's degree in the sciences. Um, that will allow you to immediately enroll into um, the Sonoma State Masters of Computer Science program. The grade point scale, you probably are familiar with this already. Um, in the United States, it's the A, B, C, D scale with A being 4.0. And so your transcripts are going to have to reflect at least a 3.0 to be directly admitted into the Masters of Computer Science program. But there are other opportunities. Um, if you do not have a 3.0 to be conditionally admitted into the program, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the type of courses that you need to be enrolled into the Masters of Computer Science program with around that 3.0 GPA, um, this talks specifically about the math um, requirements um, that you see there, the calculus and, and theory. So the equivalency that the school that you attended are going to have to be associated with that. When you send the transcripts, we're going to have to um, kind of see that if the same uh, naming isn't um, isn't what you see here, the number-wise, we might see descriptions of the programs that you take, the classes that you took, and make sure that they correspond to the requirements of the program. And I can say that you know that is very important um, that they have to meet these requirements. Um, the standards at Sonoma State University, as with any. Um, state university, private university, they have to sh make sure that the rigor is there. So in addition to the institution that you studied at, the classes that you took, the GPA, we have to make sure that there's um, a compatibility and a comparison between the classes that you took and the required classes that are needed here for admission. Um, below that you see the different types of course circuits um, for computer science that would be required. Um, and with with actual labs, so they need to see that you did have hands-on experiences in your undergraduate degree um, before you enter the master's program. And then program requirements um, in procedural language modeling, so simulation, so what you learn in bachelor's program for, for coding and those requirements um, are going to be needed in order to be in a master's degree program. Um, and the bottom one, once we get the bioengineering, There'll be um, prerequisites for students that have taken that different type of track for um, biology programs um, in order to get um, those type of master that um, track that we will have in um, fall 2018-19, and so that's something I guess to prepare for. And we'll have more information once that actual program comes online. Um, again, talk about the TOEFL scare, scores and what the minimums that are there. Um, if you don't have those minimums, there's still an opportunity to go to our intensive English program, Sally. And then the conditionally admitted students, and so this is something that um, provides opportunities for students that do not have that 3.0. Um, what, what that means is that we will look at your transcript, and that is for Reed and the admissions counselors, and determine that if you 
did not have all the required courses that they would develop, be able to develop a program for you that would be prerequisites. Electrical, electrical engineering courses at a bachelor's level and you'd be, you'd be required to take those classes, pass them in good standing in order to finally enter the master's in computer science program. So even though you might not have the 3.0, you'd be able to submit your application and get special consideration um, to see if you can be enrolled into the master's in computer science program. And I guess that's done on a case-by-case -case basis, so there's no chart or matrix that I can give you to, sh um, to kind of say, what a student might be missing and what they'll need to take, but I can assure you that um, the graduate coordinator, Fareed, as well as Soma State, will look at this program and have work with you to, to design prerequisites that will fill the requirements so you can enter the Master's of Computer Science program, but it is done on a case-by-case -case basis. In general, there's 32 units that are required to graduate with the Masters of Computer Science program. Um, most of those, predominantly the 24 to 27, are in um, the technical courses, but there are um, additional courses that are going to be in business and management, an experience course, uh, which is three units, which is be a culmination of your studies, as well as um, what you do in internship and your um, and the other programs are related to that. Um, what makes this program um, attractive to students um, coming from the United States or as well as abroad? Um, the faculty, very you know, hands-on type of faculty relationship that you will be developed. A lot of the faculty also came from the professional side, so they have their connections in the industry, which will benefit all our students once they get their degree from a Sonoma State University. Uh, I think that's very important because, again, you know, we're our way from San Francisco, an hour and 45 minutes from Silicon Valley. Um, students, parents, professors, um, they might be studying and teaching at, have taught at different universities. They come by, up to Sonoma State University because of the lifestyle up here and the smaller programs. Um, and so, we, we get the benefit of professors and faculty that, and business leaders that are looking for um, students that are going through a program here, and I think you'll be able to benefit from that. Very hands-on activity projects that are developed by the faculty and the program itself, which usually are integrated with the local businesses or people coming up from Silicon Valley. There's lots of um, community-based, interdisciplinary-based projects which are reflected on what is needed in the industries at the time and what um, corporations are coming in to talk and speak and work with you. So there's a very strong collaboration, especially in internships between all the high-tech companies in the region, which includes um, a lot of Northern California. There's lecture series. You're going to have um, CEOs and leaders of these industries come in and speak to you directly during class time or setting up presentations that you'll be able to take advantage of. You'll be able to speak to these people directly, which helps um, with opportunities and networking in the future. So a lot of our laboratories are supported by the industries that are around the area. And I think this next slide kind of shows the different companies that are supporting our, our laboratories that you will be working. So you can see Agilent in there. You can see a lot of different um, software engineering laboratories. So the ones with actual names, AFC Access, Agilent, Rolf Ilski, and William Keck, those are companies that have come in, brought some of their um, hardware, some of their facilities that they had in their systems, and use that to um, create laboratories that the students get to use. And again, they also come in at a periodical time to come check up to see how things are doing. So again, you have the benefits and network to meet with these people directly. The labs are open 24 hours. You have access to these labs to work on and develop your skills, develop your academic experience, and get ready to graduate um, with your master's degree to get your job and be successful in the future. Um, the Industry Advisory Board, I kind of mentioned that a little bit. So these are leaders from industries at different levels, director, directors to vice presidents that come in and kind of work with the faculty here and the staff at Sonoma State to kind of make sure that uh, the programs that we're developing 
are what's needed in the industry. So I think you're going to have the benefit of these different types of boards that are out there from San Francisco North Bay region, which is what we're in, the Sonoma County itself, um, which is where Sonoma State is in, which holds its own um, high-tech industries. We also have a community college up the road a little bit uh, that um, students um, as undergraduates um, can also take in and they also have their own draw from their technical programs for a two-year degree and then we have our Sonoma State University Advisory Board. So everyone that comes on these boards um, is very important leaders of the industry as well as from Sonoma State University and you're going to benefit from that once you're a student here at Sonoma State. Finally, some of the other activities going on, there's a summer academy. It's like an internship program. Um, some of these are even paid. If you are a student, an international student at Sonoma State University, you cannot work off campus. It's illegal. Um, so you can't go out and get a private job where you're, while you're a student here at Sonoma State. That's with any international students. But there are on-campus jobs that are available. Some might be in the industry. Some might be working for your faculty. Some might just be working on campus in another department. Um, the person you see on the right side, second from the right, that's Farid. So that is your graduate academic coordinator and well as faculty member. So there would be opportunities to work for up to 20 hours a week on campus. Um, those jobs itself are probably between 10 and $15 an hour, maybe more depending upon your technical expertise. So 20 hours isn't something that you can pay your tuition and live on. Again, you're going to have your foundations and support coming from overseas, but you would be able to probably get a job and have an opportunity to work on campus to support other endeavors and activities that you want to do. And the Summer Academy is just something that goes on during this period um, that you'd be able to uh, participate in. Um, hackathon. So in conjunction with other colleges and universities around the area, um, you can participate in those type of levels, whether it's in Berkeley or at the labs, whether it's here at Sonoma State or one of the other California State Universities. Our team has been successful, as you can see in the top right hand corner, getting certifications um, in competitions against other universities. We're very successful in um, the support of these type of programs and we help get our students to be out in these um, activities and support your experiences and your growth um, to become a, you know, a solid alumni and a, and a master's in computer science student. Um, there's a lot of community support, so a lot of the students, um, um, master's computer science students then in some cases they'll be get on a bus or um, develop a program working with high school students down to middle school students. So you have the opportunity to um, develop your skills and working um, in other areas and aspects like that. And so it's a great experience for our computer science students to kind of get out in the community, work with different levels and interact with different um, communities in Sonoma State as well as around Northern California. Um, there's also uh, different activities and clubs. So we have the Women Engineers Club, the General Engineering Club, Engineer, Engineers Without Borders, that's more international aspects. So you're working with uh, domestic students on different activities um, around Sonoma State as well as around Northern California. The Women Engineers Club is something that's been around for a long time in the ELS sports. Um, the aspect of um, students ladies that want to um, get a computer science degree. It's a growing aspect and the interest is growing so you'll be able to benefit from clubs like this at Sonoma State University and these clubs then are also interacting with other California State University clubs as well as the UC clubs and different organizations. So being involved in these corporations and these clubs um, is in the end is what's going to help you is build your resume, build your networking experience, um, on your resume itself, it shows that you have done activities above and beyond um, doing your academic studies and all that in the end helps support um, your um, financial endeavors, your um, job experiences and to move forward in your career. And so 
I have the questions line up, and let's see where we are now. I'm bringing back up the question. I was hoping, can people hear me out there? Yes, we can hear. Uh, we can hear it. Uh, so before we start taking the questions, do you want me to? Um, I just want to uh, uh, raise one poll so that we can understand yeah. uh, the students what exactly the program they're looking for. So I'm just launching the poll. Yeah. Audience, please take a participate in this poll so that we can um, understand which programs you are looking forward. So you can see uh, the poll in your um, uh, on your screen. And the meantime, John, if you want to start with the questions, we can get it from the students. Yeah. How are we going to be receiving these questions? Is it going to be um, voice or combination so, of voice? And uh, so the students have typed the questions here, and then I can um, I can take it one by one. Okay. Okay. So the first questions is start uh, by the Sudeep Kumar Sinaroy. And uh, he, uh, the question is that, uh, hi, sir, I want to take the admission into the MBA in the USA. The MBA program? Yep. Okay, I didn't go through the MBA program. I guess, you know, when you have one hour to kind of go through something like this, you kind of limit yourself. There is the ability to go through the MBA program. Um, what you would need to do is, um, through the School of Extended International Studies is called the Executive MBA program, and that's usually for professionals. If you're along that um, and have worked already in the industry, you'd be able to take the Executive MBA program, uh, which includes a um, no GMAT score, so students would be able to go into the Executive MBA program by applying and submitting the applications. If you wanted to get into the regular on-campus MBA program without work experience, a GA mat would be required. Okay, so John, if I understood correctly, you mentioned that MBA program required the GRE or GMAT. Yes. Okay. Okay. And do you also require some experience? Uh, let's say between two to five years of experience from the students end to apply for the MBA program. For the executive MBA program, there is work experience, um, but for the um, general MBA program, there are opportunities to come uh, without work experience. Is, is there any uh, minimum requirement which you have uh, for the MBA program, like for the GRE and GMAT? Um, I don't have that information with me. Um, but there are minimum requirements, yes. Okay, because we are also checking uh, on the uh, university portal and we are not able to find any uh, requirement for the GRE and GMAT. But you can come back okay. to us later on so that we can uh, help to the students to know about the eligibility. Correct. Okay, then the second question uh, come from the Mohammed Jad uh, that can I know about the specific programs regarding the masters in the mechanical domain? Mechanical engineering? Yep. Uh, at Sonoma State University, there is just an electrical engineering um, degree. So there's not mechanical engineering. Okay, so that means we don't so offer you, any mechanical programs. Correct. And so that you'd have to start looking at other um, California State Universities for um, that opportunity. Okay. My other question is that, that you mentioned that IELTS requirement is 7.0 for the graduate students. What about the undergraduate IELTS requirement? I believe that's 6.5. 6.5 for the undergraduate? Yes. Okay. 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 My other questions come from the Prashant Nagar that what is the eligibility required for the MS? if I belong to the bachelor degrees in the agriculture engineering. In what program? Uh, I think he uh, more uh, interested for the MS and CS because or uh, he just mentioned uh, in business also. Uh, so what, what was the question? I'm sorry. Okay, so question was the student has finished his bachelor degree in agriculture engineering and he just wants right. to know 
that he and he is working currently as a business analytics and he want to know the options available uh, for the ms programs um, and uh, what is eligibility criteria for him because he is he is not from the bash, uh, business background he is from the agriculture engineering background and so is and then he wants to get in the the master's in computer science program he is more interested for the uh, business uh, programs in the oh, ms the business program yeah Let's see. Uh, what I was doing is just looking at my other computer to see the um, requirements. So, unfortunately, I just don't have that information with me on that. So, if you can um, get your email address, um, communication to um, Abhishek here or Study Metro, you can definitely get information directly, focus on your question, and get back to you. I think what we need to do, especially in the degree that you have, we have to make sure I can get you the right information to make um, about the requirements you would need to study in the business degree. Okay. Um, uh, I have another uh, student, his name is Sheres Dubey, and his question is that, do you have something in Masters in IT or MBA in IT for the summer session? And when would they want to be starting? Sorry, I didn't get that. Summer, summer, summer. No, in summer, it's in summer in general for um, in any California State University, <coughs> there's very limited times to start your program. Traditionally, they start in fall, and so that would probably be your best opportunity to be um, starting your studies. Okay, and do we have any kind of uh, concentration is available in uh, information technology? In IT? Well, it, uh, there is computer science, but in IT, I don't think there's a concentration that you're looking for. Sorry. I guess it's more or less it's a computer science, is, it's information and technology. So, shares, I can suggest yeah. to you to select the MSNCS because generally uh, MBA program uh, give you the one year OPT only. But if you are looking for the MSNCS, you can uh, stay up to three years under the three OPT years. and two years of your MBA. So, uh, I That's would suggest correct. personally that you should go with MSNCS. Yeah, I think if this. Uh, like Abhishek say, the opportunity to spend a longer time in the United States in a program, in a um, work environment, um, the computer science, IT um, type of programs, even if you don't have there, it's no mistake, you have better opportunities to, in the long run, um, to find jobs that would benefit you either staying in the United States or going back to your, to India or just where you're going internationally and, and getting a, um, a job with higher responsibility and um, with the experiences that you get from studying here. Okay, so my next questions come that um, um, the ESL program, the students want to start the ESL program and most of the right. universities do the ESL every month. So if the students want to do the ESL, what will be the options available um, for them now? Well, they could start um, some ESL programs in the summer. And then um, if they meet uh, level four, um, then they would be able to take, uh, go directly into um, the master, if they have the academic requirements, to go into the master's program in fall. So there is opportunities there to start in the our Sally program, um, take those classes and prepare yourself for starting in the fall. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, my colleague Abby asked the question that uh, is GRS required for the MSNCS because you only talk about the TOEFL, uh, IELTS and TOEFL requirement but you haven't mentioned about the GRE for the MSNCS. Correct, yeah, there is no requirement for that for the MSNC, uh, for the Master in Computer Science. Okay, the another questions which I have that you mentioned that you required two copy of the transcript, certified transcripts copy. Um, so that means that you you don't look for the VAS or the NSCS evaluations because you do the internal evaluation um, by your team. 
Well, they they will have to, um, the transcripts will have to be reviewed. Uh, we would um, primarily need like Wes or a certified transcript from from one of the um, um, convert, uh, companies um, in order to get your certified transcript. So you need to send that through them to us. Does that make sense? Okay. So you mean to say uh, that the students has to do the evaluation and the report should come from the evaluation body. Yeah, in general, yes. Okay, okay. Because what we thought that uh, as Indian schools or Indian universities can provide the uh, duplicate transcripts copy, which is students can query you directly and then you can, uh, they can get the admission. And, and some st schools do that, I think, right now at this point, um, while we can accept scanned copies of the transcripts just to do our assessment, um, once they um, are ex um, oh, you know, accepted to university, uh, before they get accepted to university, we'll have to send their certified copies. Okay, okay. So you mean to say that first we can complete the application and can forward you the uh, the student soft copy, if they are eligible, they can do the evaluation also. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But what about those students who are, want to do the ESL first? Do you think that they can uh, apply for the ESL program? And while they are in the States and studying in ESL programs, they can submit uh, the certified copy before yes. they start their academics? Yeah. Um, our Intensive English, our ESL program is standalone. We have students that just come for the ESL program and then study elsewhere. Um, so that is an opportunity for students to come um, to Snow State first, get in the ESL program, and then after that um, apply to Snow State. Okay. Or they could apply elsewhere. Okay. So do you provide any kind of condition letter for those students who uh, study ESL but their main, uh, their main aim is to study either the graduate program or undergraduate program? So when they yeah, are applying do. and if they don't eligible, do you provide any kind of condition letter to them? Yes, we do have a conditional pathway. It's on the website. I didn't put that information here, but we have a conditional admissions pathway. So students that have the um, GPA requirements, um, but uh, like I said, are needed, um, that, but don't have a TOEFL score, or their TOEFL IELTS scores aren't high enough, um, they can be conditionally admitted to the university, and then once they meet the English requirements, they don't have to take another English language test, they can be admitted to um, Sonoma State University, they could be admitted to uh, um, some other institutions that we have partnerships with. Okay, okay. So do you also run some kind of extension program uh, like the other care states have uh, where the students can come for the graduate certificates? Yeah, we have different certificates um, that are run through our extension program, which is a department that I work on, on our website. Um, you would be able to see some of the certificates in there, and then there's also um, and I can send a link to that. There's also our extension catalog um, that I can either send to you myself a PDF of the catalog or it's on our website that shows different certificates in construction management, um, in program and project management, um, different HR. Um, and so we have a couple of different certificates that we have out there that are for short term study. Yeah, it, it, it will be very wonderful if you can just share the links with me and the copy so that we can forward to the all of our students. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, that's a growing industry in all the CSUs in general. Um, there's a lot of international students, domestic students as well, but international students that aren't looking for a master's degree, um, but they're professionals in their industry and they see a certificate as a means of increasing their experiences as well as providing more job opportunities, um, getting advancement within their corporations and certificates like this have be, are becoming more and more important. And so a lot of the California State Universities um, are developing certificates um, based upon what's going on in the industry. Sometimes there's also a component of English language added to that. So we 
um, work with certificates that we can develop that will have an English language component on the front end, which the English language classes are again focused on whatever industry that they're in, so it's not just general ESL, it's um, business ESL focused on the um, type of um, industry that they're in, and then in addition to that there's a certificate program that's based upon that can be integrated afterwards. So you'll see that coming up more and more. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So. Um, my next question came from the Shreyas Dubey that um, this is not question Shreyas. So Shreyas is asking that he want to get the admission in the ESL program. So Shreyas, yes, as we confirmed before, you can get the admissions uh, in the ESL program. Kindly send your all the, your education documents and your passport copy uh, to our admission team. That is admission at studymetro.com. And uh, after the webinar, we will forward those documents to the university delegates and um, uh, we will let you know if any more documents are required from your end. Okay. That sounds uh, good. Yeah. And my other questions come from the Sudip Kumar that, sir, I have done my MBA from distance learning. Can I apply for uh, any, any other, any programs? So it depends, one, kind of where you got your MBA program, um, and then I guess it sounds like you might be looking for another, you can apply for a new undergraduate program, you can apply for a new master's or master's program. Um, there's no, um, there's no nothing prohibiting, prohibiting from applying and getting another degree. What I'm not sure of, you know, based on the degree that he has now and the transcripts, what would be accepted from the MBA program into, say, um, like the Master's in Computer Science, it's just not a technical degree. Um, so I'm not sure where he's kind of going with that question. It's, there's no limit to how many degrees you can have, but I'm not sure what um, we could take from your current MBA degree and apply it to um, shorten your duration of your new master's program. That would just need to be determined by looking at your transcripts. But in general, um, any new master's degree that you take is going to be a minimum of two years starting from, from scratch. But some cases, um, some institutions might look at your, your prior degrees and maybe give you um, a benefit on some of those which allow you to shorten your actual um, study time for your new degree that you're taking, if that makes sense. Did that help? I think things got quiet on my end. Uh, sorry, um, uh, I oh. was in the mute. So I just lost the second um, uh, 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 second poll. So the students, you can take a participate. And in the meantime, I can um, take it forward the other questions what we have. So we will not take much questions now because we uh, we are already running out of time. So I would appreciate whatever the questions you have, just uh, put it across. So other questions which uh, we have, John, is that uh, do you do you accept the three years degree for your MS in computer science, or you require a minimum of four years degrees uh, for the master's program? Well, again, I think what that um, that falls under for the three year degree depends on um, what classes that you take. So we would we would accept that, but again, it might fall under a situation where there's some prerequisites that you would need to take before you start the master's program. So it could be up to a year of taking class, which again ends up being another year of kind of undergraduate studies. But we can start with a three-year degree. Okay, so John, um, I, I didn't understand correctly. You mean to say that they, after the evaluation only, you will be in the position to tell them to, you can accept them or not for the MSNCS program? I'm going to have to check with the um, graduate coordinator to see what his status is on a three-year degree, um, whether they're accepting or not. And that's something we can get back to you. OK, OK, that's fine. So we have another student. His name is Mr. Kiran Oberoi. And he said, um, sir, you have mentioned that if the students has not up to the mark on ILT score, they will get admission with the ESL program. 
but the visa right. success rate is very low for the ESL. Right. Uh, that's issues that uh, you know, across the board. Um, and you know what we do when we send the I twenty, we obviously uh, um, include information showing what uh, program that the student will be enrolling in after they achieve their English scores, and we hope that helps with the um, visa interview. Um, I think what happens then is working with Study Metro, working with the the team there, and helping with the visa process to make sure you answer the question succinctly, convincing the the visa officer that um, you're attending to um, ultimately achieve a master's degree in computer science or an MBA program, and then returning um, back to your home country to pursue your uh, you know, pursue your professional degree I think is something that just uh, needs it's done on a case-by-case -case basis but you are correct that in some cases if your IELTS score is low it might be better for you to retake the test and see if you get a higher score um, but um, I can just tell you that is something that we go through here a lot after we um, go through the application process with students from around the around the world and they want to you know, get into the ESL program first is because they want to get their English language skills up to a level where they can have complete comprehension and understanding of their degree programs that they want to get into. Um, sometimes the U.S. government and those visa offices don't kind of see it that way, but I think what is needed is that you um, practice this visa interview, interview process and make sure that um, you have a good line of questions and responses and to convince them that while your uh, language scores aren't high enough that your intent is to do this pathway process um, English first and get into your academic program to get your degree and then come back and pursue your professional endeavors in your home country and that's usually something that uh, will help out but it's something that's kind of out of our hands we can go through the application process but um, and include uh, the English language courses as part of your overall academic um, program, but it kind of gets tough on that end, I understand. Okay, and um, we have another student, his name is Santos, and uh, his question is that what about the uh, permanent job opportunities available uh, in the OPTs? Yeah, that I guess that ends up being with um, the student and the business that they work with. Um, in, in general, here in the United States, with the OPT, um, you know how it works is that the student um, is provided resources to find those OPT opportunities, um, and then we help them um, assist them, I guess, in trying to get to these positions. But ultimately, it's the student that needs to get that connection, do the interview with the company, and get the OPT. And then um, developing that relationship while you're in this um, OPT after one or two years that you're in that program, um, then it's up to the company themselves. It's kind of out of our hands. You're becoming, you're basically an employee of the company, and if they like what they have while you're in that OPT program, they might be offering you a position. Um, with Trump coming on board, our new president, um, and some of the people that they're hiring in his cabinet, um, there might be a little bit more resistance that's been in the past, and that's just unfortunate now. So I think the opportunity to study in America is going to be great, and um, even though it is Trump, he is an entrepreneur, and he sees the value of U.S. education systems. And I think um, there's me just as open an opportunity to study here in the U.S. and become successful. Um, and I think getting an OPT, getting a job in the future like that, it's really going to take that student to um, be very resourceful in OPT if the ultimate goal is to stay in the U.S. and work. It won't be in impossible, but predicting the future right now in the United States, it's um, um, your guess is good in mind. I'm very hopeful for the future, um, but I guess we just kind of have to wait and see what 2017 looks like. We might come back and have another presentation like this, or if you're engaged with the agents, uh, study Metro, or talking with 
our counselor is here as the time comes through the summer, we might have better information for you. Um, but right now at the end of 2016, we just have to kind of wait and see what happens. And that's kind of my honest answer on that. Okay. John, I still have a six and seven other questions, and uh, I think we are already running out of time. So, yeah, I uh, have to. Yeah, so uh, I would say to all the students that we can another plan another sessions uh, with the universities. Also, uh, in the meantime, you can touch with our admission team that is admission at studymetal.com, or you can um, call our advisor at 800-88-867 and 867. So that uh, our counselors can get the complete information once we receive from the John. Uh, uh, that is two and three questions which uh, uh, John will get back to us, and we can provide awesome. you the answers. And all about all other questions which you mentioned about your eligibility, my team can let you know uh, by next week, so that you can call them and uh, they will let you know uh, about uh, all your requirement. So most yeah, of the I appreciate that. I think, um, yeah, getting all those questions back to me, all the ones that we answered here and the ones that we didn't get the answer, I think what I'd like to do is um, um, really go back because it's really important here at Sonoma State to make sure that we have the right information out there and we're engaging um, our different academic departments. And so the questions that you know we answered here that I don't have in hand, I think I'd like to get and then um, take them back to these departments and really say this is the trends that the questions that we have coming from uh, these students that are interested in India and elsewhere and then respond directly to the people that ask the questions. I think that um, is kind of my responsibility to get back to each and every one of you that have specific questions like that to make sure um, that you have the proper answers and we're developing these communication lines and be able to step forward. Okay, so before we end the webinar, uh, this is a last poll that you can rate this webinar that uh, how you like it uh, from 10 to 6 and uh, let us know your feedback. Uh, we welcome your feedback because we can improve uh, and then we can um, we can uh, uh, like whatever our next session will be there. Uh, we will try to uh, whatever is your uh, suggestion. We will try to include uh, everything there. So Great. thank you very much, John. Uh, it's it's early morning. You started by four, I guess. And uh, uh, thank you very much for your time and all because it's a weekend time and um, yes. and you are giving your time to the Indian students. And uh, I'm very glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much, uh, everybody. We have the result with us. So 33% said 10 uh, out of 10, and 33% said 9 of 10, and 17% uh, 17 is 8 and 7. So it, it Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it, uh, all your uh, suggestion. And thank you very much, John, again. And uh, we look forward to have another webinar soon. And uh, we will let you know and we will keep you posted uh, whatever the other questions which we have, uh, which we doesn't include in this webinar, so that you can yep. get back to us. Great. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. And I hope to be traveling to India soon and maybe we'll have a chance to meet in the future. Sure, definitely. Thank you very much, all. Happy weekend ahead. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.